Hello and welcome to Parents Guide to Games. Today we are going to look at some gaming news from this week. So the first bit of gaming news I'd like to share today is that uh, the developers of Fortnite, Epic Games, is suing Apple Incorporated and Google uh, Incorporated, which is very interesting. Uh, big long process that ended up in doing this and that uh, Epic, what, what it's come down to is a few things. It's, Epic decided on its mobile platform to allow payments directly to Epic. Supposedly that breaks the rules of Apple and Google deals on mobile devices and tablets. So they have, Apple and Google have removed Fortnite, the game, from the catalog. Uh, in response to the removal, Epic has now sued both of them uh, I think it's antitrust laws. Sorry, I'm not the best in law. I've checked a couple cool things in antitrust laws, and that they have a monopoly in that money. Um, what Epic is claiming is that Apple takes about 30% of any transaction that goes that on the Fortnite app uh, takes 30% of that prof takes any of that money from Epic. Uh, for every transaction, so every you know ten dollar V buck buy, uh, it takes about 30, 30 33 percent. Is from the article that I read in the article that it's linked down in the description uh, from from Epic. Uh, it's very interesting the article, and I guess Google does about the same amount. I didn't, I didn't have a percentage in the article that I saw uh, of what Google said Google takes, but I guess it's about the same thing. Epic is a very interesting company because Epic does not only develop video games but also runs a uh, video game store itself. And they actually only take 17%, which is lower than some other ones I've seen, like Steam does you know, 20 to 25%. So that's, it's interesting, Apple, and people are upset because Apple takes so much, that's 33%, that's a lot of money to take away. Um, you know, Epic only takes 17, so it's interesting that Epic gets into this too, and that now they're suing each other and going over a legal battle. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, so right now, unfortunately, if your child plays on Fortnite on Apple or Google, it's unavailable. Um, I've heard reports that it's unavailable. Supposedly what I've read is you should be able to play out the season that we have because the seasons are updates. You should be able to still play out the 13, the 13 13.7 update until 14 comes out update which would be the 27th or the, the third season ends the 27th who knows when the fourth season starts because it's always usually about two weeks i think uh, but about that time and then they said that the game would pretty much be unavailable because they can't they can't update it anymore uh they may have just removed the process uh that's very interesting um i actually should have checked before i deleted off my phone but i did because i was like well there's no point for this and delete off my phone i still have it on you know uh, my console gaming which is interesting because right now you the only way to play Fortnite is PC or consoles, and it's very interesting. I know Epic that's not how they want to do things. Uh, they want to be accessible to everybody and anything because um, in certain countries mobile gaming is bigger than PC or console gaming. So that's you know what they want to be, and just with this now being the thing, there's not much to do. It's a really interesting legal battle to see pointed out. Very interesting conversation to have with people uh, to see what's going on about this because it's and just interesting, fascinating to see. Because I know it's oh, it's, it's legal, it's money, and it's these billion dollar companies. Yeah, but it's really interesting to see what because what Fortnite's trying to do is lower that percentage. And they're like I said, there's on their storefront 17 percent, where Apple's 33, even more. I guess reports some people have, have had to pay out more on Google and M and Apple. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe you know, working with fires, cause I know fires that aren't the most popular with, with Amazon, but Amazon fires do exist and I don't know if you can do Fortnite on them yet. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this uh, fight, this lawsuit, the banning of Fortnite off your device. So it's just crazy, crazy time, crazy, crazy things that are happening with with the Fortnite, you know, Google, Apple battle, because it's just, it, it's going to be an interesting watch, and I don't, I don't think it's a story that's going to go away anytime soon. 
The next uh, article of news I want to talk about is that a, there's a new study come out uh, conducted in the UK by the National Literacy Trust. And what they have found is that gaming is not bad. And it's not to say bad, but not, it, it's actually helpful for children. Uh, video games here, the top of the video games are good for children mentally and emotionally study finds. Uh, what it's seen in this study is they did uh, tested 4,626 young people ages 11 to 16 were serving in the UK. Almost three quarters, so uh, it's at 73% of them, said that gaming helps them feel like they're part of a story, which in turn inspires their own creativity and literacy skills. 65 say that video games could help them really imagine being someone else, which of course implies a level of genuine empathy. Meanwhile, 6% of parents interviewed said that they recognized gaming ability to keep their kids in contact with friends and family during lockdown. They have added that this was clearly important to the mental well-being of their children as someone who would only really talk to their friends through Call of Duty Warzone for the first few months of lockdown. I can vouch for this the person that writes um, you know, online gaming. And it's just interesting that uh, Jonathan Douglas, the chief executive of the National Literacy Trust, said this research absolutely suggests that the mechanicisms of young people themselves really enjoy our best ways to put them into the water pattern of reading and writing. It is excelling to uncover opportunities that video game play and provide for young people to engage in reading, stimulate creativity through writing, enhance communication with friends and family, and support empathy and well-being. Uh, it's really interesting in this project, uh, this study, come out, you know, dealing with you know the mental health and people connecting with video games because that that is what happens. Uh, you know, they're they're bad and they're people trolls and you know hurtful things said over games. I've heard stuff all the time. But gaming really connects, you know, it, it brings people together more than it divides people apart. And that's you know, the really crazy thing uh, that people are seeing in studies, and which is really awesome. Uh, you know, gaming getting, you know, the recognition that it does now, you know, in this study that, you know, good for, you know, mental well-being. Like getting, you know, letting them imagine I can, known conversations with my kids and, my son just imagining, you know, taking video game characters and changing them in their setting and making them new and changing how things work in his head and making stories and pictures and, you know, both of my kids do that, both of my other kids do that. And it's just, it's just amazing to watch them and like, I'm gonna get inspired and even sometimes they take out the video game characters and it's other characters and it's characters they made up and, you know, which is really great and really awesome. Uh, shows the creativity that video games can excel. You know, video games can be great. There's, you know, visual novels that you can play and you can find them when there's no talking. I've, I've done multiple, I've done multiple ones myself on my own personal YouTube channel uh, where you, people don't talk, so you have to, you read everything and you listen and you can, it, it's just like reading a book, you know, even Final Fantasy VI, seven, all the older Final Fantasies, there were no talking in those games. It was all reading and, you know, those, Back in the day, it's three, four PlayStation discs long, and you just the hours of content that you can deal with that you had to read. You know, the game didn't ex explain it to you. You didn't, you know, have someone talking to you, holding your hand. You would read the whole thing, and you know, if you missed the part, then you missed the whole story. So, you know, gaming can be just like books and show imagination. Uh, like I said, visual novels are are really interesting. You know, it's even, you know, being in a school, when I was working in a school setting, I could see kids, you know, doing virtual books. It's the same thing, people. It's it's honestly from a when you know, gaming gives you a choice. You know, maybe a few cho choices, a few puzzles, and all that. But it, it's the same thing as what you know, people listening to audiobooks do. You know, it's just you're sitting in front of a computer while playing a game that's a visual novel, and that's that's what's really great. And you know, people learning and reading that. I've heard multiple stories of people, you know, learning to read because of video games. Because you know, I didn't put the English subtitles on, and or I put I didn't put my native language and I put my subtitles. So then I found out what words were or close to it. You know, that's pretty crazy. Uh, it's just an interesting, very, very great story that shows that people are coming together even in this hardship of times and showing the positives of what gaming can be, and it's so great and so cool like that. And I just want to say it's unfortunately that. You know, interesting story, happy story. No, it's unfortunately going to be a sad story. Um, and that is about uh, research into gaming addiction and 
game addiction's hard, and I, I, I there are problems. Uh, people can be addicted to video games, and it, it is really hard, and I could probably tell you myself, I, for a while there, I might have been addicted to games. I played video games, I dreamt video games, all I thought about were video games, and, you know, it was really escape for where I was, and, but, it, but I've gotten down, I've played video games regularly, you know, I'm not better at it, uh, and this just shows, this, this goes on, and I'll clip a few things, uh, a new study published by Harvard University, uh, Oxford, Harvard, who, Oxford University suggested that there is not enough evidence to claim that gaming itself is cause of gaming addiction and shouldn't be classified as a medical disorder. The reason the gaming gamers who display symptoms of gaming disorder are likely to be suffering from external issues or unrelated gaming itself. Now I can tell you that that was probably what set me off. You know, I've dealt with my issues in my past and I'm a lot better and um, taking a lot of positives in my life. Um, the study also, another direct response to the uh, World Health Organization's controversial decision, which they labeled gaming disorder as a disease, uh, which has already drawn plenty of criticism from various entertainment associations from across the globe, including the US, Canada, South Korea, Australia, and the UK, who have come together to criticize the move, warning of far reaching and unintentional consequences that could affect those generally in need of help. Uh, Professor Andrew Pawlowski, director of the research at Oxford Internet Institute and co author of the study, suggests that those engaging and dysfunctional gaming are likely to have underlying frustrations and wider psychosocial understandings issues outside the game. So what that brings up is there's usually an outside issue that brings in the gaming addiction, which is really, I would say probably true, probably true of all addictions. Um, there was an outside issue that helped, that led to the addiction. Uh, people smoke because they're nervous then they become addicted to smoking, smoking. People drink to get rid of problems, but drinking, unfortunately, that leads to alcoholism. It, I guess it's, it's just a direct pattern. Has issues, plays video games, addicted to video games. That's just what this is just saying. And that, that, game addiction is bad. Game addiction is bad. People need help. I'm not saying that's bad. And then we should push it off and go like, if you need the help, you can get that. I will uh, have something down below about gaming addiction to help someone with gaming addiction. I actually did a video on gaming addiction uh, quite a while ago. That's uh, it's somewhere in, in this channel and I'll find the link, I'll put it down below, but I will find the resources that I can so that if you know somebody with gaming addiction, you can help them. Uh, like I said, the gaming addiction probably has something else leading to it, but that's just to show you that gaming addiction is not the only problem that problem that person probably has. So that is just be tender, just like any other addiction. And last bit of gaming news is a positive and I guess also negative, uh, and it's coming from Sony, uh, and that it's saying that it, they have confirmed that arcade sticks and other special peripherals. Uh, they list here uh, racing wheels, uh, here we go. Uh, racing wheels, arcade sticks, and fight sticks. Um, so racing wheel, you know, driving, arcade stick, you know, old school gaming again, and fight stick, kind of the same thing. Um, that you bought for your PlayStation Four are going to work for PlayStation Five, which is really, which is really great because those can be expensive. Um, uh, racing wheel can be a couple thousand dollars. You know, there are, there are cheaper options, but the people do have $1,000 racing wheels with setups. And every time a new generation comes up, it's always that hard problem of, oh darn, I have to buy a new one. Um, arcade sticks the same in fighting games, fight sticks, um, or flight sticks, is it flight sticks? I forgot about flight sticks. Flight, arcade sticks and fight sticks are the same thing, but they're flight sticks, so like flight simulators. So like Microsoft Flight Simulator really coming out. Uh, having to buy a new one to say, like, hey, I want to upgrade my system. With PlayStation, they said, Anything that's set up for the old for four will work for five, which is awesome because you don't have to replace all that stuff and that's that, that's just, it gets really expensive really quickly. Um, a good fight stick, 200 bucks. Um, a good racing, $500. Uh, flight sticks, I couldn't even imagine. I, I haven't even looked those up in a long, long time. Uh, but 
they will work with PlayStation 5 games and support PlayStation 4 games. So that's really awesome that they're doing that. They did say, unfortunately, in their system, with the new PlayStation 5, that they have reinvented their gaming controller. People are a little upset. People like it. It's it's kind of, it's weird, but the old DualShock controller four, which works for PlayStation Four, of course, will not work for PlayStation Five. It will support the PlayStation Four games if if you play them as what it reads. Um, but unfortunately, PlayStation Four controllers will not work for PlayStation Five games. That's just in the story, kind of big, kind of crazy. Like I said, it happens a lot when a generation, when the new generation comes out in a new video game. Uh, Xbox has been that problem. I, when I jump from 360 to one, I honestly told my wife I don't see buying a one because I have all these accessories for 360. Do I really need to? And I, unfortunately, later on, I did buy an Xbox one. I do a PC as well. So, uh, you know, jumping from that is hard, especially at the beginning because hey, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. And you're like, man, I spent, if you know, if you, these don't, things don't work, you spend a lot of money on them, you know, like, to see Infinity, you know, Skylander stuff like that. Even that stuff, you know, that's hard to, that's a lot of money that that's you now sitting there. It's just really interesting, really great that PlayStation allows the the high end, not going to say high end, just as, you know, peripherals for those things work on PlayStation 5, unfortunately. The old controllers that PlayStation makes do not. So that's give and take. Um, are, does everybody have a fight stick? No, I don't have a fight stick. I don't play. I play some fighting games when I use my you know, controller. Do I wear racing steel? No, no, I don't have one of those. Uh, a flight stick, flight something there? No, they're like, really cool, but no, I don't have any of those. Not everyone has them, but those people that do have, they are supporting those people, which is really awesome. And like I said, with a new generation. Not a surprise that the DualShock 4, which worked for PlayStation 4, do not work with 5, because 5 is a completely different controller, and they want to complete everyone. Everyone to clean sweep, everyone to work on the same thing. So, you know, that's just interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, like, modded controllers work. When I mean modded controllers, I don't mean, like, rapid-fire controllers. I mean, like, scuff gaming controllers. I haven't seen anything on them yet. Um, Battle Beaver controllers, controllers that are, you know, the PlayStation 4 design that have, say, buttons on the back, um, paddles on the back to fire, to, you know, do actions, you can do that, mapping, you know, buttons and all that, and triggers. I, it'd be interesting to see what what they say about those. I guess that, that's the only thing I really don't know. Uh, I think it's still a lot of questions on that to begin with from those companies. Especially says, you know, I know it's kind of weird, but Call of Duty League, Call of Duty League is exclusive to PlayStation. Uh, so their PlayStation controllers go with, you know, they go with PlayStation controllers to play Call of Duty. Uh, most, I would, most of them that I know of the high end players play with a scuff controller or a battle beaver controller. Uh, and NBA 2K, NBA 2K is PlayStation and they all use those same type of controllers. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with those type of controllers as we're getting under the generation that these pros have to, have to switch. Do they have to try something new? Do they have to completely mod them and change them? Change them? You know, it's just gonna be the interesting things to see um, with devices coming out uh, in this next generation. But those third party, I said fight sticks, flight simulators, and racing wheels will still work. So if you have any of those items for your kids playing, awesome. Those work, no problems. Big shout out to bensound.com for the music. Please follow Parents Guide to Games on Facebook at Parents Guide to Games, on Twitter at Parents G2G, and email any questions or comments to parentsg2g at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.